initial acceleration. Speeding up any object involves converting the potential energy of its position into the kinetic energy of its motion. In this lesson, we'll study how electric fields are used to accelerate the hydrogen minus ion. But first, let's study another field, gravity. Assuming there's no air, what's the maximum velocity a proton would reach if dropped from the top of Mount Everest? As the proton begins its fall, it will convert its gravitational potential energy, which depends on its mass and height, into kinetic energy. Using these values and the known value for gravity, we can calculate the gravitational potential energy. Equating the initial potential energy with the final kinetic energy, we can determine the proton's velocity. The proton's velocity when it hits the ground is approximately 416 meters per second, or about one millionth the speed of light. And this is nowhere near fast enough to shatter atomic nuclei. What we've just discovered is that gravity is simply not strong enough for our purposes, and we cannot make gravity stronger. However, we can make very strong electric fields. In an electric field, Voltage difference in charge replaces the height difference in mass in a gravitational field. At the ion source, the ions are given a boost by an electrical potential difference of 300,000 volts to send them on their way to the cyclotron. This potential difference causes a change in the ion's potential energy that is then converted into kinetic energy. So, Let's calculate their velocity as they leave the ion source. Assuming that the ions travel much slower than the speed of light, we'll use the non-relativistic form of kinetic energy. Equating the potential energy released with the kinetic energy gained, and knowing the ion's mass and charge, we can determine its velocity. Once again, we plug in these known values into our equation. Taking the square root, we discover that the ions are now traveling at 7.6 million meters per second, or approximately 2.5% the speed of light. This is fast, but still slow enough so relativity does not come into play. Now you'd think that as the ions travel through the vacuum beam line, that they'd fall due to the gravitational field. Well, they do, but not by very much. Refer to the workbook, where you can calculate how little they do fall due to gravity. 